Hello, everyone. Hopefully you can hear me. Hi there, RAFE. I'm Lisa Ayers, the Director of Communications at the Realtor Association of the Fox Valley, and welcome to the live June edition of our panel series, Real Estate Experience Live. This is a series created by the RAFE Technology and Communications Committee, and the goal of this series is to tackle real issues in real estate with realtors. Our topic today is video and how to best use it for your business. We are actually live today, so feel free to put questions and comments in the chat if you're joining us on Zoom or in the comments if you're on Facebook. But before we get into the discussion, I'd like to say thank you so much to our panelists for taking your time to educate us today. I know you are super busy and we really appreciate you. Uh, and I'd also like to thank everyone in the viewing audience today. We know you're busy out there too, so thank you so much uh, for joining us. We will be having a Q&A after the panel, so be sure to stick around until after the broadcast, until the end of the broadcast after the panel discussion. So let's get started. First, let me introduce our panelists. Today, we are truly honored to have with us a highly sought after professional keynote speaker for the real estate industry. Jeremiah is a tech savvy millennial who speaks from the heart and specializes in helping people every everyone improve their tech expertise, regardless of skill level or generational differences. He engages his audience with high energy, comedic performances that are infused with relative stories from his real life experiences as a real estate practitioner of almost 14 years. He provides fresh perspective uh, with a no fluff, authentic style of delivery, and has been training business people for over 16 years to overcome their fears and start crushing their goals. His speaking career began 28 years ago when he was the ring announcer for his third grade elementary school circus. It's my pleasure to introduce Jeremiah's J-Man Monero. Hope good I said morning, that Good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh yeah, that was perfect. As you're reading that, I'm like, man, I really got to shorten that bio way too long. But uh, thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here today. Thank you so much. Um, next. We have Mrs. Witted, formerly known as Meg Byrne Leeps of Baird and Warner Fox Valley. Meg has been in the real estate industry for only four years and operates without a team. But at the end of her second year, she was in the top 1% of sales in the Chicago area for all agents, including teams, and is in the top 1% of sales for all of Baird and Warner, which includes over 3,500 agents. She has sold over 50 million in real estate during her short career. And Meg uses her keen marketing and video skills, along with her background in economics, to excel in this competitive market. Meg is featured in the 2021 edition of Who's Who of Chicago Agents for Chicago Agent Magazine. And we're so lucky to have her here with us. Please welcome Meg Whitted. Thank you so much, Lisa. I'm very honored to be here. Thank you for asking me. Well, we're so happy to, to have you and we can't wait to hear of all the tips and tricks you have for video because I see you on, you come up in my Facebook feed all the time. So I'm excited to hear yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> and then thirdly, we have Gianni Nieto of Realty One Group Excel. Gianni has been a realtor for almost 15 years. He has conducted business in North Carolina and in the Fox Valley. Gianni is the new agent trainer at his office and has a passion for helping those new to the industry. Gianni has served on our community outreach committee and on our young professionals network for two years and currently serves as the chairperson of the YPN committee. Last year, Gianni was voted our 2020 YPN All-Star. Please welcome Gianni Nieto. Thank you guys. Um, like everybody else said, I'm really appreciative that you asked me to be a part of this panel. Um, I think video is like something we all have to get into and get used to it. So the more tips we can learn and give out, be great. Yep, we gotta get comfortable with, with it, right? Yes. I mean, that's how we grow and learn is to get uncomfortable a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> right. So thank you, Gianni. And then lastly, serving as moderator and panelist, we have Justin Lethaby. Justin is a 15 year real estate veteran and is also a John Maxwell certified coach, teacher and trainer. Justin is better. Oh, what was that? Oh, sorry. I heard something in the background. Sorry about that. He's a, a certified coach, teacher, and trainer. Justin is better known as the E professor of real estate and works with companies to deliver solutions in the area of sales, marketing, systems, and professional leadership, and has trained clients all across the U.S. 
For RAFE, Justin has served on the Technology and Communications Committee for seven years and was the chair of that committee for three. He also serves on the Education Committee as a license and is a licensed CE instructor and an instructor for MRED and RAFB. Thank you, Justin, so much for joining us. And I'll just turn it over to you at this point. Well, all right, all right. So I think we got the whole gambit. We've got the old people over here, which would be me, and then we got all the young folks that know how to do all this stuff and make it work. So we're going to talk about how to get technology used today, and more specifically today about video. And I think one of the most powerful things that we can do for our business these days is be in video and make sure that is part of our business plans, um, whether it's to a very small degree or like some of us on this panel, a very major portion of our business. So with that being said, let's just ask the first question. Let's get it right out of the way. Why video? So J-Man, I'm going to start with you, Jeremiah. I'm going to start with you. Why video? I mean, I've known you for a while. I've seen you all over the place. And I know you probably have a little bit of an opinion on this. So let's start with that. Why do we do video? Yeah, I think for me, you know, video is the very best way to build your brand. And when I say build your brand, it's like get people to know who you are, what you're like, what your personality is. There's so many people now that as we're opening up post pandemic, I see them in person. I'm like, wait, we've never really met, right? We've never really met before, but we've talked so much in video. They see my face. Um, even yesterday I was at an event and they go, it's weird to see you like in 3D, like in front of me. And so I think... It's just a, just a great way to get out there, get people to know who you are, because people are going to do business with you, with your personality, more so than like you're the, the top salesperson on the planet. You know, it's I like that guy. I like his personality. Let's do business. Yeah, no, I, I love that. How about yourself, Meg? I know you say you're, you, you know, you're fairly new in the business and obviously you went pretty hard with video right after that. Why was that part of your business plan? Well, and initially started off as necessity. I think a lot of times when you get into any sales job, or, you know, very specifically real estate, we all assume right away that our friends and family are signing up to work with us, right? And then we find out very quickly that they're not the first ones to do business with us. Um, so it's, I'm going to be real honest, it's kind of a fake it till you make it until, you know, so your friends and family start to see that you're doing business. So I started video off initially just so that my own friends and family knew that I was out working. Um, before that, I was a stay-at-home mom for eight years. Before that, I did mortgage sales, and I never sold a mortgage to anyone in my family or anyone of my friends, and I had a very successful mortgage business. But you know, when I got into real estate, I just knew that I couldn't initially rely on friends and family. I needed them to get buy-in, right? They knew me as a stay-at-home mom. They didn't know me as a realtor. So um, I would go out on these brokers' tours, and the brokers were very cool about letting me feature their properties. I would do open houses. I would feature their properties through video. And very much like J-Man was saying, um, one of the best parts of doing video was when people would call me from seeing my videos on Facebook, they were like my people. You know, they, I was attracting the kinds of clients that I want to work with. And it's because they got to know my personality. And I have to tell you, they are my favorite clients. When anybody says, I found you on Facebook, I'm like, oh, thank goodness, you know? If they're just my people. I love working with them. They feel like they know me right when I come into their home. It makes the whole listing appointment more comfortable. It's just a great way to do business. And I'm going to be really honest. You know, I do a ton of video. When you look back on my first few, I am not comfortable. And even to this day, I am still not comfortable. And I get a lot of feedback from people like, oh, you're a natural. You know, you just, you, you feel like you know what you're doing. And, you know, you should always be uncomfortable in your business. If you are super comfortable, you're probably not doing enough, right, to get new business. And I am never comfortable. I'm going to tell you, I, there's times where my, like my seller is standing in the front yard watching me do a video. That's awkward, you know, but I do it anyways. So, you know, as much as it may seem comfortable for some people versus others, um, I do it anyways. And it's, I will tell you, I never realized how much it would propel my business so quickly. I always felt like I would do well in real estate. It's a passion of mine, but I had no clue what the power of video would do for my business so fast. So, you know, that's kind of my feeling about it. I keep doing it, doing it consistently is really important, not just kind of a one off here and there video, like a lot, in, right? A lot in sales, you have to kind of keep doing the activities. And at some point you will start to see the payoff, but it's not necessarily like you, you do a video and all of a sudden somebody's calling you off that video. I mean, just it does happen. Yeah, 
it happens, but you know, they need to kind of like see you for a little while, right? So, you know, it was probably a good six months where all of a sudden people were calling me and what an awesome way to do business, to have people call you, right? So you have to be really consistent. You have to be committed to doing it regularly. That's yeah, that's awesome. So much, so much. I hope people are listening because there's so much meat in what you just said out there. Um, that is quite amazing. Johnny, how about yourself? I know, you know, me and you have done a couple of videos together here and there. Why do you feel the importance of video is today? Like they both kind of said, like, it's a quick way of getting the word out. And I, I feel like it catches people's attention more than just like a, like a quick pick, you know, you, I mean, a picture can say a lot, but when you actually talk and engaging, they kind of know who you are, who they're going to watch, who they're going to get into a um, meeting and kind of get a vibe of how, like if it's an event, like, you know, if they get excited about it, if you're excited about it, the, the video kind of helps you sell the pro product or event, I feel, you know, but I'm still trying to get used to being in front of the camera, you know, like, um, and I, I know I need to get into it more, but I do a lot like helping people do it, but I haven't done it for myself. You know, I, I tell all the new agents, you know, you have to get used to doing it. You know, um, it's just the way the real estate is going. And if you want to make it, you really got to do it. So it's kind of hard for me to do it myself, but, you know, practice what I preach basically, you know, well, you know, I'll give you a little bit of break on that because I'll say I'll have similar problems. I teach something about to do this, but I feel like a builder, right? You know, builders have all the leftovers of all their projects they haven't finished for some other home. It's kind of the same thing for some of us, right? We teach so much that sometimes we forget about doing it ourselves. And going back to what Meg said, most definitely it's about commitment, right? It's about the yeah. consistency of it. Um, it's very, very huge. Going back to that, um, I love what Meg said about being nervous, you know, there's probably very few of us that would actually say that we're not energized or at least have some sort of nervous energy when we get in front of doing this. Probably that there might be only one person, but I even say, I think he might <laughs> say he's got a little nerves every so often, but we got to get past those nerves. And I think one of the easiest ways to get past those nerves is to know what to talk about. Because what I hear all the time when I get in front of people is they go, that's great, but I have nothing to say. I have nothing to deliver. I have nothing to contribute, which we all in this audience know that that's actually not true. So let's talk about that. Uh, Meg, I'm going to start with you on this one because you were kind of already hinting at this and you were already talking about some of the things you did. So what do we talk about? If we are going to do these videos and we're doing this and we're trying to get our brand out and we're trying to build that no like trust, what do we talk about? How do we, how do we get that information out? So, you know, the one thing, you know, most of my videos are Facebook. You kind of have to know your audience and the platform you're using. The one thing that I, I would say is most meaningful is that they're getting to know you. I think the biggest mistake a lot of us make is we put on our realtor hat and we're realtor Meg Witted, right? Nobody wants the realtor version of me on Facebook. They want me. So it's important that you really are just yourself. I think, you know, with all of the things that you say wrong, right? So I, I jumble my words up all the time. I've been locked out of doors in the middle of a video and you just kind of have to laugh about it. Um, I use the same words all the time and I get made fun of by like my peers <laughs> in my office. And one of the guys was like, how many times are you gonna say gorgeous or amazing? I'm like, you know, it's live video, it's not scripted. Who cares, you know, right? So you kind of have to let some of that go and just kind of go with the flow. Um, you know, aside from doing like home videos, which is featuring your own business or featuring other business, you know, other homes so that you can kind of build your business. Um, I think anything that you read that you find important or informational, people love information. Um, whether it's current market trends. I mean, everybody's super curious about the real estate market right now because it's so bananas. Everybody wants to know, what do you think about it? I mean, that's actually a regular phone call I get from people. You know, none of us have a crystal ball, but they all want to know what my opinion is of what the market's going to be like in the next six months, you know? So share that kind of information. Um, one video I just started recently for myself um, is called Why Your Agent Matters. And I'm sharing personal stories of things that have happened to me with clients or other agents or just interactions I've had and why I feel like it's, you know, different tips and advice of things that I feel like are important for people to consider before they hire an agent. Um, so find something that's meaningful, 
that you think is informational, that also shares a little bit about yourself. I think it's really important on Facebook that it's not just you selling a house or just you talking about yourself, talking about other people and getting, getting people interested in what's kind of happening around you, sharing information about your family. If you have a family or things that you're doing, it's, they want to know you as a person. This is not LinkedIn, right? We're not all linked together for business. And we're not all walking around, you know, with our professional badges of like, this is who we are. Facebook is people. So people want to know you. So it's important that you kind of open yourself up a little bit. I, I love that. I love that. Jenny, about yourself, what kind of topics are you teaching new agents that they should be talking about? Um, the same. Well, a lot, like she said, the, the most popular topic is market updates. You know, that's the most important one right now, but also like the properties, you know, like um, the, another one that I, I'm getting into now is like testimonials, you know, telling them to actually get their client at that final walkthrough, get them to, you know, comment how their service was, how, what, what they were expecting and what they received, you know, um, and tell them how, like if they did a good job and stuff like that. So you can post, I think that would, would do really great on all the platforms really. Um, but the other stuff is just like um, event marketing training. Like I do a lot of the training stuff. So like that's a lot of things that I post as well. Awesome. Okay, Jay, man, I know you're biting at the bit. So let's see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not biting at the bit, man. I just got ADHD, so I can't. No, no, I know. I'm just giving you a Come on, man. Let's go. <laughs> um, so, you know, I use a resource like Answer the Public. Uh, if you go to answerthepublic.com, it, it will actually give you the Google searches that people search and their frequency. And you can kind of work backwards with content from there. Cause it's always like, okay, who's my audience? What are the questions that they have? And if I can answer those questions, then I'm more likely to come up in those searches when somebody's right these days, we don't go to the library anymore, right? We don't take these things out called books. You go to Google and you say, how much down payment do I need? How's the market? Um, you know, is there a dog park nearby? So all those things like points of interest, uh, during the pandemic, we did cabin fever relievers because, you know, I'm an elder millennial and my clients are elder millennials with children. And they're like, yo, where can I go to take these kids? Cause I'm trapped in the house. So like answering all those things, you know, if, if I was my client, what would I want to consume on a daily basis? And, and there has to be some kind of, it's edu, we call it edutainment, right? There's right. educational portion to it, but there's also some entertainment, which is, kind of me just being who I am. And uh, just like Meg said, like you attract your tribe. Most people, mm -hmm. they, they, they contact you. You're like, yo, man, what's up? You sound with OPP. Yeah, you don't be other people's <laughs> property all day, every day, baby. You know, so it's, 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 uh, I work backwards from there and, and I just have mm -hmm. fun with it. Like they can see when you're having fun, they're going to have fun. And then that's where that rapport is built. They like know and trust you first, then they're going to do business with you second. Uh, you know, I absolutely do do love that. I think Answer the Public is a very well used tool, um, underused tool, but it's a very well used tool that you can take advantage of to know what to talk about next. I'm going to simplify it. I'm going to go old school, right? So going back to what J-Man just said, I'm going to recommend we are talking to our clients, our customers, our base every day. We're having those conversations. They are asking us questions every day. Every time you answer a question, that's a video. Just break it down. Be simple. Those are videos. If we're going to answer for one person, why not answer for a million and one and be out there and make it happen? Um, but if you don't have any ideas, like you're saying, I don't even get questions, which I'm going to doubt, then then use those tools. Answer the public. Use Facebook. Research. Follow your tribes. Be on there and be in those tools. Um, this wasn't in the question list, but I am going to ask this right now because it'll lead to the next kind of topic. But I am curious. Which platform are you on today? Which platform are you seeing the best bang for your dollar? So, you know, is it Facebook? Is it YouTube? Is it Instagram? Is it uh, TikTok? That one just scares the heck out of me, but is it TikTok? What is it out there? Um, Johnny, I'll start with you. Where are you seeing anybody, you know, you're training yourself. Are you seeing the best bang your back? What platform are you seeing that goes for you? Really the two that it's Instagram and Facebook. Those are the ones and maybe that's because I'm more comfortable with them, but that's where I see the most interaction with my followers, should I say. Okay. 
Right. Meg? You know, my biggest success has by far been with Facebook. I have, I have been on Instagram. It's fine for me. Um, I do know realtors that have been incredibly successful at getting and converting leads from that. I would like to know more about it, but you know, I think we all kind of have an area that's our, uh, that, that's our area of comfort or just for whatever reason, just kind of works for us. Um, Facebook has been, um, my biggest platform by far, but you know, you have to watch that over time. Um, it actually has changed quite a bit for realtors. When I first started doing videos a few years ago, they didn't have that feature of special category. Um, and then you have to click for housing. That special category is killing me, man. Right? So you brought up TikTok. Holy cow, I have no interest in doing it, but my husband, we're 43, is obsessed with TikTok, okay? <laughs> There's realtors of TikTok. And now I'm like, geez, you know, and you know, everybody thinks that if you're doing videos and you're on Instagram and you're on social media, whatever, they all think that you're tech savvy. I am the least tech savvy person. So I have to tell you, if you don't think that social media or videos is your thing, you know, I'm the person that like when DVDs came out, I was doing VHS for the next 10 years. When CDs came out, I was doing cassettes for like another eight years. So I am super slow to change. I had an iPhone three years after my 80-year-old grandmother had one. So I'm super slow to change. So video is actually super easy on Facebook. But when I see these TikToks, they're amazing. Like they have voiceovers. They've got all this music. And like, I don't how many hours do these people spend putting like one together? I have no idea. But I know I need to figure it out. That is the next trend. And I have to tell you, there are so many people, um, I would say probably ages 25 to like 45 that are on this. And I'm, those are like our movers, right? Those are the people buying up. Those are the people that are getting bigger families. Those are the people that need bigger houses, smaller houses, whatever, first time home buyers. Like that's where they are at. And they just want to be entertained. Like that's, I think, the next kind of big thing. And there's already realtors doing it. So, you know, it's important to kind of know the trend and get on it before other people. That's I, to be honest, one of the biggest reasons and I was super successful with Facebook, you know, we're in the far west suburbs of Chicago and um, and out this way, a little slower to change. So, you know, the city realtors were doing videos far before I was ever doing them. Um, but when I started doing them, there were not really anybody in that space. So I stood out, you know, I'm at the point where I don't know if I stand out anymore. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. But I'm already seeing a change in that traffic on my Facebook page. So I do think TikTok is kind of the next big thing. I got to figure that out. Maybe my husband will show me how to do it. <laughs> or my like, or maybe my college son will figure, help me figure it out. Hey, utilizing those kids that aren't afraid of that stuff is a huge technique to get this stuff done, right? Ah, just go do it. It's easy. <laughs> okay, fine. Show me how it's done. Um, it's, it's beautiful. Okay, how about yourself, Jeremiah? J-Man, what are you... What are you using? Where are you seeing your biggest platform reaches today? Yeah, so for me, it's a combination of Instagram and Facebook, uh, but I still try to repurpose everything to my YouTube channel to keep it evergreen. And, you know, people can always search that up when they're when they're doing their Google searches. But uh, I pulled my insights just yesterday because I did a class on video. Surprise. And my Facebook page had a reach of almost three quarters of a million people. Um, because of video and specifically because of one video that I uploaded that wasn't mine, but it was a great viral video that I natively uploaded and with creative comments with attribution, meaning you source where it came from, um, that one video had reached over a million people, which then helped my page have a reach of over three quarters of a million people. And it's still continuously. <laughs> so sometimes if you're not, you don't have ideas for content, Hey, Mrs. What you guys got? I, I might share her video, and you know all of that—that that cross pollination—and I call it DJ and content, just sharing other people's stuff if it's good. Um, but but keeping it fresh, and and again trying to trying to keep it entertaining on Instagram uh, Reels, we're seeing like a probably a ten times greater return as far as the algorithm, right? The algorithm's pushing that more because they're trying to pull some of that traffic from TikTok. They launched it right when the president said he was gonna ban TikTok. Uh, and then we do some with TikTok. We're not great on there. We actually, I'll create stuff on TikTok and then download it and then upload it to my Instagram um, just because I don't have the following on TikTok that I do. I initially got on there, uh, like Meg said, because my 10 year old is on there. He's like, dad, let's do a TikTok. I'm like, let's go. I'm like, 
dancing and doing all this. And look, I'm not the best dancer you've ever seen in, the, in, in your whole life, but I'm having fun with it, right? And I, I think that's, that's the thing where like, hey, I got rhythm, but some of these dances are like kind of hard. But the, uh, the editing and stuff like you see on there and those, the filters and that, I think there isn't another platform out there that compares to it. How easy you can do it right on your phone and do these crazy edits and cuts and transitions. There isn't another <laughs> app out there. So if you don't like TikTok, create stuff in there, uh, download it, and then repurpose it elsewhere. And that's a really good idea I didn't think of, right? Because I am I look at TikTok, I look at it, I have concerns with it. I have concerns with it from a um, the stuff you see on there. Some things are very not, I don't think, professionally appropriate. <laughs> but, 100%. Um, yeah, that's true. So it has concerns <laughs> for me. Um, but... I think what you just said is is huge, right? Leverage, right? It's a huge thing to do. So if you don't really want it on there, the tools that are built in there may give you enough to be able to leverage it for other programs, which could be an exact thing. I got to ask, I'm going to take a side tangent because you mentioned it. So are you, have, are, do we have TikToks we got to see for J-Man Fortnite dances or something like that? <laughs> ah, yeah, man, check it out. J-Man speaks on TikTok. Well, any, any of the good stuff, you'll see it on my reels on Instagram. So oh, there we go. Uh, to be consistent, it's like J-Man Speaks on all the platform. You can find me there and have a, have a chuckle. I Here's the <laughs> thing I will say. I love what everybody just said. Everyone has their own platform. And I'm going to tell you right now, folks, for all of us that are listening out there, there is not a wrong answer. The only wrong answer is consistency in doing it, right? If you want to be on Facebook, be on Facebook. If you want to be on Instagram, be on Instagram. If you want to be on TikTok, be on TikTok, right? Do it, but you got to do it and you got to do it consistently. For me, it's YouTube. I'll be completely honest with you. I, it's um, the only other more used website today is Google. And if people don't know this, YouTube is Google. So if I can be on YouTube, I'm hitting the two most searched platforms ever. <laughs> so that's what I go for. And that's where I spend. I don't spend a lot of time on Facebook anymore and it works for me. So the point I want to make sure we all understand is there is no wrong platform. Take what we're hearing there. Take the ones you, I will say this, going back to what Meg said very early, you've got to know your audience and you got to know where your audience is at. And if, if you're sitting on TikTok and your audience is on Facebook, Hey, great. You're having fun, but you're not going to see much growth from that. With that, we hear all this stuff, right? Okay, you're doing this. We're watching J-Man. J-Man, I'm not going to call. Oh, I'm going to call you out. I apologize if this I shouldn't. Okay. But J-Man's doing it from his phone right now. It looks like the rest of us are maybe doing it from our phone or cameras or laptops or other devices that are out there. So let's kind of talk about the tech that we need. I'm going to put that in air quotes because I, I think we think we need $10,000 worth of equipment to get this started. So let's talk about tech first, and then we'll kind of talk about some software. Um, so first, let's talk about the tech. What kind of tech are you using today to get this done? Um, J-Man, well, actually, just walked out. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good, man. I didn't mean to do that to you. You're good. Oh, he's grabbing it. So J-Man, since you're here and you're ready to go, <laughs> what, is your, what is your tech arsenal that you are using today for creating your videos? Let's just stick with well, hardware for now. Yeah, I think your smartphone is, is, if you had to focus on one tool, one thing you need, the smartphone can get it done, right? Could you, are there, is there better stuff? Yeah, I, I do a lot of live streaming as soon as the pandemic hit. I upgraded my MacBook. I got a MacBook Pro, which costs way too much money, but it has the power to do all the streaming. Once you start streaming, you have PowerPoint going, you got Zoom going, you got, you know, Facebook and all of that. That's, a, that's really heavy uh on your on your device but then from there i would probably go to like a wide angle lens something like this it just clips right onto your smartphone right so if you're doing tours of houses this is like eight bucks okay this is not expensive type stuff and then it, you know your audio is just important as your video so if you have airpods or i mean there's a whole bunch of other stuff that we would recommend but air anything that's better than the microphone that's built into your phone because people can take substandard video if the audio quality is poor they're going to tune out right if it's crackly if it's you know you guys are in illinois it's, it's a bit windy you're outside you know and then, oh, they can't hear anything so 
or you got music in the background still got to keep going you know what i'm saying but um yeah so i have a bunch of other stuff but that's i guess that's good to get started we'll pass it pass it on to meg that's perfect uh meg how about yourself what kind of tools are you using today Okay, so back to I am not a tech person, right? So the easier, the better. I don't, I have beautiful, awesome AirPods my husband gave me. Don't use them. I don't even know where they are. That little tool you just showed, that magnifier, that's super cool. Even if I bought it, I probably wouldn't use it because I wouldn't figure out how to put it on my phone. And I had one of those really long sticks, whatever they're called. And I don't even know how it's supposed to hold my phone. I couldn't figure it out. So I am as basic as you get. I have a decent iPhone, a pretty decent one. Um, and I just do Facebook Lives holding it myself. No sticks, no lights, nothing. Um, if, it's, if there's construction outside, I'm talking louder. <laughs> um, it's as basic as you get. Now, the only thing that I do aside from like a live video would be that on occasion, um, I need to do actual video and piece it together. And that again goes back to just something really simple. So I just use the app iMovie. I take, you know, maybe three separate videos and then they merge them all together for me. It's so easy. I can do it. Um, and other than that, that's it. I'm just using um, Facebook Live and um, Instagram Live. Uh, and then in the in the event, I actually have to use real video. And sometimes that comes into play if you can't get a uh, good connection. Maybe I'm out in a more rural area. Um, or sometimes there's just an, another reason why live video is not ideal. Um, or to your point, Justin, um, if you want to upload to YouTube, right? So um, if you're trying to grow that YouTube feed um, in, your, in your Google searches and stuff, which is something I'm going to start kind of working on a little bit. But you got to piece it all together. So I just use I, iMovie to kind of uh, do those transitions so that it ends up being kind of one whole piece together. And that's it. I know there's a lot of fancy stuff out there, but that is not me. Hey, getting it done, right? That's the most important thing. So whatever it takes to do that. Yeah, there's some people I'll tell you, there's a couple of realtors out here that have done a fabulous job of, I, I don't know if they're hiring people. I don't quite know how it's all done, but they do, I would say, a much higher end version of video and um and it's beautiful i just i have no no ability to even make that happen it's just not within my my mental space but what i'm doing on a real basic level still works so you don't have to go that far 100 percent, couldn't agree more jan about yourself what tools of the trade are you using today currently i'm kind of like meg i'm basic i use the iphone ipad um the pods, you know, um, I was looking into getting a better microphone just because like um, J-Man said, audio is important if you don't, if you, if you don't have, if you can shoot a good video, but if you don't have good audio, it's worthless, you know? So um, I was thinking about doing that or one of those phone stands that have the microphone in it just so it can, you know, assist me more. Um, Cause I mean, I can have the iPad, but the other, is, they, is he showing it? <laughs> I was gonna say he's got um, he, he's got an arsenal like I do. So, <laughs> but pretty much that's it. You know, that's what I the tools that I use, the equipment should I say? Well, and I, I couldn't agree more. Right here's the thing I'm gonna I'm gonna tell most people. I think we all just said it right. Stay basic. When if when you need to grow to something bigger, then grow to something bigger. You know, J Man right. said it earlier. He upgraded his laptop. I literally I'm a week new into uh, a Lenovo uh legion gaming laptop and not for gaming i don't game but it needed the hardware it needed the power because as J Man, i'm doing more things from a live teaching and doing other stuff but when i first started it was my phone it was a 600 dollars laptop it was the camera on the 600 dollars laptop right it wasn't anything crazy it was effective the only thing i did spend money on early from what everybody is saying and i will i will echo it is the audio was very important to me. I wanted to make sure out of anything else, they could hear me and understand. And it wasn't crackly and it wasn't beaten up and it wasn't things like that. If the audio is bad, then I get worried. So I spend money on that. Um, you know, I have a Yeti uh, snow, uh, a, a blue Yeti, which costs 99 bucks. I have a little better mic that costs a couple hundred bucks. That's for different things. It depends on what's going on. Um, but keeping that simple. Now, with that being said, we can't, you can increase the technology, right? You can buy a higher end webcam. Probably I would encourage it eventually. You 
would probably want to eventually buy a boom mic for your for your phone so you can hear that maybe a portable boom mic so you can do these things and have some of that stuff and not have the chicago winds blowing through your camera if you can absolutely avoid it but not necessary early on there are always solutions for that so that's the hardware side of this let's talk a little bit about software we only got about two more questions folks just so you know so if you guys have questions write them in the chat box please mask them out there and we'll we'll do that when we're done talking here but um as far as it goes what about software what software are you doing things today either from a on-demand video or from a live i know and we'll start with you matt because you already mentioned iMovie on some of the things you do is that is that it or is there other things that you're using today in general for software and i guess maybe i don't understand the question when you're asking about well software. so like your editing software or for like distribution you know how are you handling putting it out into the platforms are you doing it manually or are you using it aggregate tools to help put it out there and the answer yeah. is if you don't then it's fine you know it's those i don't ones. yeah i mean it's just it's a like a share um you know we've got facebook group pages so there's you know spreading it there's spreading it organically obviously you can do paid boosts which on Facebook has become more challenging. They're just not giving you credit for those paid boosts like they used to. So um, yeah, I don't I don't have anything fancy as far as that's concerned. Um, it's just a matter of um, engaging other followers, engaging them and just putting things out and, and letting things kind of organically happen. Awesome, awesome. How about you, Gianni? So it depends on what I'm gonna, what video I'm using or like what I wanna do. Like if I'm just doing a quick, um, coming soon or new listing, I use like Breakthrough Broker. Um, they have great options that you, uh, you really have to do. I mean, they even have where you can actually look up the MLS um, and it automatically imports your pictures from the MLS. You just click, add a couple of words and you got a quick video. Um, and then if it needs a little bit more, like if I'm actually gonna edit a video, I can either do Canva or um, in video dot io um they have the template already made all you really have to do is drop the video edit you know really just drop the video change the wording just like the breakthrough broker um and it's simple and it looks professional it's probably what people are using when you say like oh the professional video it really makes it look that way um and all you do is download the video you recorded on your iphone edit it and you got a professional looking video that's um, awesome. And, and then the other one that I'm using too is um, Video Licious, um, which is really cool because you can actually write the script and film it and read. Like it like has a little, like tells you your script right there while your video. I'm using it for like messages to my clients and new agents, you know, because um, I my Spanish writing is not as good. So I have to use a lot of the translation. So I think it, I used it other uh, necessity. I was like, let me just speak it, send them a quick video. And it, it's been helpful. That's awesome. Yeah. And that tool is a good tool. Video Licious is a very good tool. Um, Jamin, how about yourself? What kind of software is in your arsenal, either from an editing or really even from a distribution perspective? Yeah. So we love software. <laughs> Almost too much. We spent too much money on it. We're early adapters, so like the shiny penny, I'm always chasing it, uh, and which leads to a lot of money being wasted sometimes. And but I'm happy to share with you what what gives us a good return. So we started out doing our Facebook lives on BeLive.tv, uh, interview style, right? I think you use that too, Justin, or have used that in mm -hmm. the past? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and I think lately, because of so many people being on it, it has been performing as great. Uh, then you have Restream.io. If you want to go to multiple platforms, you can go to Facebook, LinkedIn, and uh, Facebook, link oh, and YouTube, simulcast. Uh, and then, like, those are browser-based. And then StreamYard would be your, your third one. So you don't have to actually download the software. You just go to the site within your browser. It's not as heavy on your system. And then when we do our live streams and our events and stuff like that, we use a program called Ecamm. Uh, Ecam, I feel like it's there's nothing better. Like we can we can program scenes. We have the sound effects. We you know if you want to do events and stuff like that, it's, there's no other option. But if you're a Windows user, the Windows version of that is called VMix. If you participated in the NAR conference at all, 
vmix is the program they used to re record those sessions and send them out and have the the rolling thirds come in and then have the video cut and all that good stuff so we do get fancy sometimes but you know for we're being hired to to host an event or something like that i feel like that's what you should do um but there is no wrong answer like you said it's just we we have a problem stopping once we start something no, no I, I'm with you on that, right? I, I am the big old nerd of the group. I'm the e-professor. I'm the one just like you, Jay, man, I'm going to try them all ahead of time. That way no one else has to try them afterwards, right? Nope, that ain't going to work. Don't stay away or this is going to work. Try it. Um, so totally can get that. A quick, can I ask him a quick question about StreamYard? Is that also like doing like the podcast and YouTube video? Like, is that when you can stream in both places? Restream would be that. Yeah. So if you restream, you can be on your Facebook page and also your YouTube channel, same time, simulcast. Okay. And it'll, it'll bring both feeds, both of those comment feeds into the, the program itself. So you don't have to be over here on YouTube trying to monitor over here on Facebook. It's all in one, one feed. Okay, no way. And just a side note for the audience that are actually watching this via YouTube and Facebook today, we're actually using StreamYard, which is a competitor to Restream. That is actually what we're doing right now for that. <laughs> so you will actually see the little duck icon on the right hand corner of that's out there. Um, so you'll you will you will see that. So they do work. Um, so one more question, then we're going to go to the audience question. We got a couple in place here. Give us your one best go-to tip. Like if someone's going to say, I want to start video today, what's that one thing you would tell them today? So what's that one huge go-to? Um, Gianni, I'm going to start with you. Just uh, try to get in. Um, just go with your first take. If you keep doing it over and over again, you're going to talk yourself out of it. Just try to get it all in one take and use that. Oh. Even if you made mistakes, just keep going. I love it. Don't be afraid of the blooper reels. They're good for us down the road. <laughs> um, Meg, how about yourself? I think that's excellent advice. Um, I would also say find a, a way that is comfortable for you. So I am more of a candid, go with the flow, seat of your pants kind of person that works for me. That's what's comfortable for me. If you are somebody that does better with something a little more planned out and like we were just talking about some better technology, that's kind of how you see yourself and put, want to put yourself out there then do that. Um, find, find a way that is comfortable for you. Don't necessarily try to just mimic another successful person. They're successful because it's their way, right? It's what's comfortable for them. So if you're just trying to copy somebody else's success, it may not work as well for you. So alter it a little bit and do it in a way that presents you the way you want to be presented. It also uh, is, is comfortable. It comes across on video if you are not comfortable. It will. Okay, Jay, man, about yourself. What's that one big tip? What's going to make everybody become video stars tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my, my tip is just... Be authentic, be yourself and speak from the heart, right? Like if, if you really love real estate, like I believe we all do and people watching this, like share that. Like every day I'm so excited that I have the opportunity to help people find the home of their dreams. Like that, we make a difference in their life with every single transaction. I think if you can, if you can translate that via video, you can connect with them heart to heart rather than, than mind to mind too often we're like, logically it makes sense interest rates are low you're going to get a tax break and blah 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 blah. like who cares about that how about you know it's just going to be your home where you and your family can grow and live and make memories and like that's what we do every day so i think it's if you can communicate that via video you're going to be a star at least in your own house and then soon in, <laughs> in the homes of many <laughs> Yeah, I, I love it because I think one of the things that we're seeing right now, and I will just echo it, it's it's be you. Every single one of us in this room, I think we'll say it, be you, be who you are. And don't worry about someone else saying the same thing you said because they haven't said it in your voice. And that voice is you, and that's who they're relating to. So don't be bashful. Don't be worrisome. 
about that. Just go out there and, and really, I, you know, what I get told all the time, because I talk to professional trainers who are trying to get me to do more things, get over yourself. <laughs> so totally. I, will, I will repeat the same thing over yourself already. Yeah. <laughs> right. So with that being said, um, I do, before we get to the question, I do want to thank everybody, Meg, Gianni, J-Man for being here. We're not done yet, folks. Ask those questions. I do see a couple in here that we're asking, but you know, we're here now the last few minutes of the day. We're here for you to answer those questions that are just eaten at you that you want done in here. So the first question that I saw in here is what about podcasting? Um, how many of you here are actually, well, first place, let's ask this question. How many of you are actually podcasting, right? Either it's, you know, I, by default, by the, just so you know, podcasting is such a generic term anymore. We all are. As soon as we create a video and put it on a platform, we're all doing right. it. So the answer for every single one of us is yes, we are. <laughs> but how many of you are podcasting or how many of you are very least leveraging your content on multiple platforms? So Meg, are you podcasting on a, on a separate platform other than what you talked about? I'm, I'm just on Facebook and Instagram, but I am looking for kind of another outlet. Like I said, you know, Facebook, I love it. It's still doing well. Um, but it's there. Facebook in general is just making it more challenging for realtors, you know, to kind of break into their space. I think that we've all jumped on that video bandwagon on Facebook and they are really making it a little challenging for us, you know, to continue with multiple videos or getting lots of traction um, just the way that they require you to advertise paid advertisements and things like that. It's just become more challenging. So I am looking for some other outlets. I, I do use um, Instagram live and um, we'll post videos there as well. But like I was just, we were talking a little bit earlier today. I do think that areas like TikTok and there's another one, you know, again, goes back to me not being as tech savvy as people think I am. I know there's another one out there. I forgot what it's called, but um but yeah, just a couple different places. And, and I think that sometimes that's all you can handle, right? I mean, I think it's good to kind of go in a couple different areas. And um, some I've actually learned quite a bit from you guys today. I've got a few things to kind of go look at myself when you're talking about being able to like simultaneously spread yourself everywhere. I'm like, didn't even know I could do that. So <laughs> um, I've got some things to kind of research myself. But um yeah, so I'm just in a couple different places, but I think that if you can if you can spread yourself out and get in a few other areas, um, that's a good thing. Jenny, how about yourself? Have you converted any material to other platforms for podcasting or whatnot? Um, well, I mean, I use all platforms as much as possible, but I'm in the works of doing a podcast, um, and it should be coming out soon. So it's still finalizing everything, but something that should be out soon. Coming soon. Look for Gianni. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> How about you, Jay, man? Although I think I already know the answer. So, well, you know, like you say, with with video, we're doing it. We we're definitely missing an opportunity to rip all the audio from the number of shows that we've done since we started doing video. Like, there's all this content that could be repurposed in an, just a strictly audio type way. So we are missing the boat on that. It's something that's on our should list. Um, but we do it. We we have a regular show every Friday at 9 a.m. We have uh, a real estate show we do once a month, the last Wednesday of the month, me, Marky, and Carrie. It's called Good Morning Real Estate. And then we, we um, I have another one for McKissick Real Estate Education that I do once a month called The Winner's Table. And I try to repurpose all of that as much as possible and, and, and also just repurpose content in short form, right? So if it's a 30-minute video and, man, we might have a nugget of something we talked about today, one minute of that can get posted onto you know, Instagram or uh, YouTube has new YouTube shorts where they're, they're, they're doing shorter videos so that people can die. You know, people love, we have short attention spans. We want to digest that in a shorter form, not watch an entirely 30, 30 minute video, but give me the, the crib notes of it. Right. And, and it's basically what we're doing. I, I guess when you talk about podcasting, we would love to do more. I, I think there's always more that we can do, but I need to find a way to, to, make it systematic because if I leave it up to me, it's not going to get done. <laughs> right. It's like, I need somewhere I can push a button. It rips the audio, makes a thing. And then I have a virtual system that takes care of that. But yeah, I think just scheduling something though, if you're getting started, putting in your calendar on a regular basis. And like Meg said in the beginning, it's consistency over time. 
it's not one and done. If, if you can continue to, to be, be committed to something, you'll see the results. I, and I absolutely, so I do actually convert all my stuff to podcasting formats because I use a tool called otter.ai. It rips out the audio. It transcribes for me. Now, what I don't do is the blogging part of that. So I've just like, Jay, man, I got to find someone else that's going to willing to do that for me because it's just not in my wheelhouse, <laughs> but one step at a time, right? But I do love it. I want everybody to hear what J-Man just said, because I think this is where things are at. TikTok, Snapchat, all these other tools are in micro content. And if you speak, we know we're speaking now for 45 minutes or so. You actually see in here, um, there's going to be biteable chunks from Meg, from Gianni, from J-Man. There's going to be so much good material that you can just take out a a one minute segment and you're going to get much more consumption on any platform out there because it's just more much more attainable much more biteable in in the platform so don't be afraid to do that now again please understand we're going to tell you a lot of things with answering these questions one step at a time master one thing move on to the next folks don't worry about doing everything we talk about right now because it's going to start getting overwhelming um next question in here and we'll just say anybody that wants to answer it um what about uh, subtitles? Are you, are, is anybody seeing importance or developing the subtitles in their stuff? Now, a lot of tools are doing it already, but is anybody creating their own? I, I have closed captions on mine. Um, actually, the first time I ever did that in a video, I had somebody message me right away like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. You just added that. <laughs> so if that's what you're referring to, um, are you talking about so, like, is that the closed caption titles? Is that what you're referring to? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the only thing is you have to go back in because it's, it's reading what you're saying and everything I, I talk in is slang. The only thing I don't care for is that it takes all my slang and like, you know, everything is wanna instead of want, <laughs> you know, um, never gets my name right. So, you know, that kind of thing. So you just got to go in and edit it. But um, I do think that there's value to that. So many of us are watching videos with the sound off because we're in a lot of locations where we really can't uh, have it on. Most of us are, I'd say most of the people I know are sitting there at a park or they're at a doctor's office. There are a lot of women with children and there are places where they want to watch videos, but can't have the sound on. That's kind of my audience. You know, I have a lot of, a lot of moms. And so they're in places where they can't listen to it. So that, those captions are important. I, yeah, I love it. Oh, and I'll be a little smart aleck about it since I'm a CE instructor and I watch it happen or someone taking a class and watching a video silently right? on the side. Oh my gosh. <laughs> our, our, our attention span is so small right now. It's like, oh, I've got one minute to go do something. It's always going to be a video, you know? Oh, absolutely. Um, so J, uh, Jamie and Jenna, are you the one using transcription tools specifically for, uh, you know, closed captioning or subtitles? I haven't. Yeah, I. Um, so you got to make sure your settings are turned on when you go into your live video settings on Facebook. They'll transcribe it for you automatically. And like Meg said, you got to go back in. If you're a fast talking New Yorker like me, they mess it up all the time. And I, especially my name, Jeremiah Monero. It's, it's awful. And um, YouTube will do it automatically as well. It's less accurate. Uh, there's another tool <laughs> called, called <laughs> There's another tool called Web Captioner that will caption what you're saying live for free on the web. If you have another window that you can share, if that's if the availability of that. Or we've also used rev.com, R-E-V.com. They'll do it for you. You send them the video and it's, it's up to $1.25, I think. $1.25 per minute. So I'm not gonna do it on my like longer videos, but if it's a five minute video, all day long, I will pay $1.25 for them to transcribe it accurately and then it, they will actually burn it into the video meaning it's a part of the video itself so wherever you upload it the the, the captioning is, is built right in that's awesome i love that i forgot about rev i gotta go back to that one I forgot about that tool um this is why i like doing these things because i'm always either learning or remembering what i forgot um last question jay rasmussen asked us where would you go to find videos about what content to talk about. I know you talked about the one website already. Um, your, I forget what it's even called now, answerthepublic.com. Is there other places you look to find about talkable content that we can produce, reproduce in our voice? 
Uh, yeah. Johnny, let's go start with you real quick. Um, the only other um, site that I kind of get some information from is, um, and now I can't think of it, um, <laughs> I think current, currentmatters.com. Oh, yeah. or, um, keeping current. Sorry. Keeping, keeping current? Yeah. Casey keeping Young. current. Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keepingcurrent.com or something like that. Yeah, that's where I get some of the like, inspiration and ideas from. Awesome. Meg, how about yourself? Thank you, Meg. Yeah, um, I would say definitely inspiration. It depends on what kind of video you want to put out. Obviously, if you're looking for more content, I do really like what the Realtors Association of Fox Valley puts out because that's really specific to our local market. So if you're looking for stats and information like that, I think that's awesome. People love to know specifically about their current market. Um, and to be honest with you, I get a ton of inspiration from um, other realtors videos. I love to go to other parts of the country that I feel like are a little edgier than the Midwest. We're kind of like always slow to the cool stuff. So I love to go to watch. I love to see what people in New York are doing. I love to see what people like in LA, there's some really just different kinds of things that are happening. I feel like those big cities, like they do the stuff first and then it does trickle down to us eventually. Right. And us Midwesterners, especially I'm out in the suburbs, so like we are really not ready for some of the cool stuff right away, <laughs> you know. So I I do enjoy watching what other realtors are doing in other parts of the country. Um, I love watching young realtors. Like I I feel like that's where it's at, especially with video. They're so creative, and I think they really hit the mark when it comes to engaging with people. They really understand these platforms. They understand Snapchat, TikTok. They understand that it's not about putting on this facade that I'm a professional realtor to sell, send, sell you a house. It's this is who I am. And as J-Man said earlier, you know, first know me, like me, right? That's the first part. 90% of people choose a realtor because they like them, right? That's what it, it starts with. So um, I think keeping that in mind and as you're looking for content and, and you're looking at what other realtors are doing, especially in other parts of the country that are a little bit more forward thinking than we are here, um, I think you can really get some inspiration from that. You don't, again, you don't have to do exactly what somebody else is doing. and I don't even recommend it. Um, but inspiration from that, I think is awesome. Yeah, I love it. Jamie, how about yourself? Any other websites that you go to that hasn't been mentioned? You know, I, I think it's pull the audience when, when I say audience, your clients, like you could create a video to get more video content, say, Hey everybody, this is Jeremiah J. Manero with XYZ Realty. I want to know what's your favorite restaurant to go to. Where should I go to today to get the best meal on the planet? Comment below. And now you have all these different places that you can go to. Or where's your favorite park to go to with the kids? Comment below. Who's got the best pizza in town? Hey, is it New York style pizza or is it Chicago? And then pff, we'll have a whole rumble about that, right? Right. Like, like a fight. Yeah, straight up, like New York. No, it's kind of, but it's uh, so pulling the audience like that. And I think, look at Riz Media, um, Inman News, like they do a lot of research. So if you yeah. get an email and it has all these, those are great ideas. They have a whole team of people coming up with ideas that are smarter than me. So why would I try to reinvent the wheel? Just be like, man, that sounds like a good idea. I'm just going to take that, make it you know, more specific to my market or change the perspective or say it in my voice. And then you got great content. I love it. I love it. So yeah, I would agree with all that. I love Inman, those things. All the thing I'll always say, going back to what uh, Jeremiah's J-Man said the, earlier is give credit where credit is due. We are not allowed to plagiarize copyright. Those are all issues we fight as real estate professionals. Just because it's in Google does not mean it's free. Just so everybody <laughs> knows, we have to be aware of that. Um, with that, I love it. We are at that time and I don't want to keep us all in here. So thanks everybody for being here. Go find Meg, go find Gianni, go find J-Man. If you look at the flyer, there's links in there to find them where they're at. Learn from them, uh, watch them, participate. Thanks, everybody, for being involved for the Realtor Association of Fox Valley Real event. Thanks, everybody here for participating. Meg, Gianni, and J-Man, we really appreciate you. Everyone have a great day, and we'll see you at the next Reel. Thank you. Thank you so much.